Cool. All right. So welcome to 2021. Um, and let's kick off this new year with an even better first meeting. The agenda is quite light here, but uh, yeah, let's, let's get that done. Um, thanks a lot for scribing, Bridget. And I see your first item is actually yours. So maybe someone else wants to support you scribing while you walk us through sure. the, the release. You know, I'm not sure if we're going to have a lot to note here in this particular case. I wanted to make sure we talked about, and then we'll probably continue to talk about until we get there, um, the uh, next SMI release. And I have a few links in here, a few notes. Um, we did have a request some time ago and um, got him to add more detail. This is one of my colleagues and one of Phil's colleagues who was looking to, to use that um, V1 alpha four version of traffic specs API. And so that kind of led to the discussion of, hey, should we be cutting a release? It's been a while. And then um, I know Stefan had written a gist about uh, documenting the release process. And yeah, I just kind of wanted to open the floor to, does anyone have any actions they want to take or uh, items they want to add um, or you know, feedback for Stefan's gist? Before we get to that, I just realized I totally forget to ask if we have any new members, anyone who has joined us the first time today. Yes, <laughs> I was thinking. Oh yeah, please introduce yourself. Let's like do that first. Quick, quick introduction. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Michael and Bridget. So uh, my name is Amin. Um, I recently joined AWS as an SDE. Uh, I work on the Kubernetes and serverless area. Uh, from time to time, I work with the amazing Michael uh, on the AWS controllers for Kubernetes. And yeah, this is my first meeting about uh, with the SMI. Um, I hope to to learn uh, with you guys and do amazing things this year. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. welcome. Anyone else? Yeah, welcome. I think. Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Sungu. I work for Intel as a, one of the tech lead, and uh, this is my first meeting today. So I recently got started on looking into service mesh, and uh, so just uh, learning the whole concept and uh, figuring out how service mesh would work. Um, our primary focus is uh, um, uh, tuning service mesh towards the telco application models, and uh, that's what we're looking into. So I'm just getting started into whole SMI and what service mesh is, so looking forward to learn more. Awesome. Welcome. And can you let us know where you're based out of time time zone wise, just to get a bit of an idea? Yeah, I'm based in Portland, Oregon. So basically Pacific uh, time. Okay. And um, I'm based in Luxembourg. So uh, an hour more than Michael's. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks a lot. I think that's it now, right? I <laughs> forgot anyone else. Right? Okay, cool. Then sorry for the interruption. I should have done. Oh, that no, it, okay. that was good. I'm glad that we uh, did that. So anyway, I'm not uh, assuming that we're going to decide anything on the call right this moment, especially because Stefan wasn't able to join us today, apparently. But I wanted to make sure we started thinking about what does our next release look like? Um, Michael, I know that you had some input into that in the past. What are your thoughts? Oops, I keep muting myself. Um, yeah, I think that we should you know, really come up with a little bit more of a, of a structure and the cadence. Otherwise it's, it's kind of um, this, you know, big, like, oh, scary thing once a year, a new <laughs> version or whatever. I'd rather have smaller batches and, and release more often, especially if we're not doing breaking stuff, right? If we, mm -hmm. if we get something done and, and uh, there is no good reason why not to cut a new version. And I think, um, and, and maybe that's a separate, topic that we decide, I mean, given that our cadence is two weeks, that, you know, maybe once a month or once every two months, we have fixed releases, right? And and uh, even if it's just one new tiny thing, we get out, okay, that's that's fine. Um, but I, th th at least that was my perception from, from last year a little bit that, you know, it's kind of like, it took quite some time. It's not a criticism, it's just like an observation that, um, as with software, it's probably easier to do smaller more often than, you know, these big bang once a year releases. I don't know, at least that's my. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess because this is a spec, um, 
we don't want everyone who's trying to implement it to feel like it's a moving target that they have to re-implement every two weeks. I mean, we don't want to strike that kind of fear right, in everyone's right. hearts. Right. But at the same time, if people have been waiting since October for something to be in the spec, like we we don't want to keep right. that waiting. We, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to, um, exactly. we don't want the spec to stand in the way of the implementers moving forward either. Right. So I guess I'm asking guess, the community, I'm, I'm interested in what everyone thinks is like, what is the right balance yeah. there? Right. And, and I guess that's my emphasis on, on non-breaking. Like if, if something is like, okay, here we need to clarify this bit or, you know, there are some, some contradictory, whatever it is that, that essentially helps people to implement it better, faster, or whatever, um, that's, the, that's the, the push and not necessarily saying like, okay, um, yeah, why should someone wait for, for half a year? I, I, I get the, the, okay, moving target, thing or, or, or idea that's that's definitely not a good thing but um yeah on the other hand having having too much i'm going by between two releases might might not be a good thing either yeah so I, I mean are we talking about the difference between like clarifications and bug fixes i think those should be going out all the time since we're talking about documentation you can always just be refining the things that we've already talked about um, but then new features, I, I can see new features being scary, but you know, we're also sitting at alpha, you know, I mean, like this new spec is going to come out and like from Nginx perspective, we're not going to immediately just uplift all the code, right. To, to support it. Like we're going to, we're, we're going to have to take our time to, to consume it. If other releases come out, we can always leapfrog too. I, I, I'm I'm a little bit more sensitive about beta and then and then actual like production level releases than I am about Absolutely. alpha releases. Absolutely. So I kind of lean towards just my opinion, but I kind of lean towards quicker cadences on on alpha because I'm not that scared and I expect things are going to break at some point. Right. And and I guess my my main argument for a set release cadence thing at least, you know, I don't know, once a month or whatever, is that, you know, it doesn't mean that with every release, it has to be a big thing. Maybe it is really a tiny thing, but we don't need to have the discussion, like, when will the next release be? It's like, clearly, this is going to be there. And maybe a certain feature, a certain fix makes it into that release, or maybe it misses the train and goes into the next one. That's fine. But, you know, it's just like, it's clear every last, Monday or whatever, we're doing a release and that's it, right? So then then we can still decide like, you know, is that uh, feature X or whatever ready or ready for the next uh, cadence or next next cutting the release or not? Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Um, Phil, since you represent a team that is doing an implementation with OSM, do you, do you want to address like what you think about Michael's idea of having like fixed dates for spec releases? Yeah, I, I, I'm fine with that. Um, I know we, we try to, well, I guess what, what's the cadence? On, are we talking monthly, quarterly? I mean, that's what we're, that's what we're deciding okay, here. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, <laughs> yeah. got it. I guess. Yeah, I, you know, um, th that works. I mean, I guess if there's anything that uh, like that's experimental, right? You can put a feature flag and et cetera, you know. Um, but yeah, that, that works to me. I think that'll give the community uh, a cadence of when they can expect uh, things to be available. Um, you know, if we're putting that in the change log, et cetera. So yeah, I'm I'm on board with that. You got my vote. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think I concur with that cadence. I definitely concur with the cadence. Yeah. I don't know what that timeline actually looks like, but expected releases. So I agree with Phil and Michael on, on, on. And, and I didn't mean to resolve it today. I, I, what I, I meant is that, you know, we can say, okay, this is the proposal. This is what, you know, the people who are on that call uh, are fine with. And next time we meet, we could uh, put that, you know, to a vote or whatever, saying like, okay, can we resolve that? And then use that as, as the first, you know, uh, try out with that. All right, that sounds awesome. And that is what I wanted to discuss. And thank you so much for uh, putting the time to that. Back to you, Michael. Cool. 
Um, the next thing I see here is the as my metrics discussion, or because the other one also requires Stefan's input regarding the release process. Yeah, that is the the metrics discussion. Yeah, so I, I just so. threw that in there. Yeah, so um, yeah, I want to take the temperature. So um, obviously, you you guys know, you all know that we've been um, building out OSM. And so we, we've kind to we've hit this kind of uh, what do we do with the the UI of, of OSM? And so I've had some, some some deep conversations with Michelle, and you know we feel like, hey, let's what if we just make the metrics uh, SMI metrics robust enough, like that abstraction layer, uh, because you know everyone likes Kali, and then we say, hey, what if we can make this abstraction layer so that we can bring Kiali into, um, you know, uh, to, to look at any uh, service mesh that is utilizing SMI uh, and, and kind of have that pluggable experience, you know, because, um, you know, obviously our, our cloud teams are looking at like Azure Monitor, those are different sets of APIs, et cetera. But, uh, you know, we, we're trying to figure out, hey, what can we do to make this kind of modular for the community? Uh, because we know that, you know, even people that are using SEO, they like Kiali, so it seems like there's just a big community feel around uh, the look and feel of Kiali. And uh, I've not dug that deep. I'm, I'm starting to look deep into the uh, metrics uh, API, but you know, uh, just looking through it, it doesn't look too robust at this point. <laughs> not saying that it can't, uh, but I, I like to see if that's something that is worth kind of specking out um, in, in that type of scenario. So I know I was rambling, but hopefully everything I was saying kind of makes sense. So, so Phil, I'm trying to understand. Just forget. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Go, go yeah, go forward, Matt. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, from our perspective, we we think it's a little bit constrained too. Um, okay. And, and I've been thinking about: is there ways to extend it to add metrics into it? But then the right. more I think about that, so like, oh, let's say you know, let's say your data plane provides this metric that's not necessarily represented in the latency metrics of SMI metric. Um, you know, how can we make it generic so that I can add this key value pair or, or then right. dimensions that go into the metric and it's all generic and I can fill it out. And then the more I think about that, are we doing something that we're not really like good at? Like we're really, like I think service mesh is really good at um, networking and security um, and it's good at providing observability, but should we be worried about the transport of observability? And then I start thinking about open telemetry. So I keep walking. Right. Yep. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I haven't really concluded anything yet, but I think there's room for extensibility. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm still, uh, yeah, go, go for it, Michael. No, no, sorry. You, you were about to. No, no, I was saying, yeah, no. So yeah, we, we talk about open telemetry and I, I think it's the same use case, right? It's um, like oh, open telemetry is, can still talk to the SMI metrics, right? To pull stuff. Is that kind of how you were thinking about it, Matthew or? Yeah, I mean, I haven't thought that deeply on it. Like I. So like I'm saying, I keep going around in circles, but um, you, you, you can. Now I'll tell you that people that are using, you know, internally to F5 that are trying to do metricsy and visibility type stuff, keep bypassing SMI metrics and going straight to Prometheus and then right. yep. Prometheus exporters. Because one reason is because they understand the metrics that the data plan natively supports. And so they're just sidestepping. Now a customer is not necessarily gonna have that level of knowledge, but I think they eventually will. And so we're, we're really struggling. We're really struggling with saying use SMI metrics and then being told, well, you're just not telling us the data we really care about, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't thinking that um, it, it would be very confined, right? Like if we look at like, uh, with like Google's SRE doc, like like golden metrics, right? It, it's not to be extensible, but enough that hey, 
I, I got enough data to figure out what, what's going on in my mesh. I, I, I don't ever think we'll have parity with, you know, all the native stuff out there. And, and I don't think that that will be the job of SMI metrics, right? I think it has the golden metrics, like the 80-20 the, the rule type of stuff. Um, then, then that helps us be able to not worry so much about building um, specific UIs to kind of surface this stuff up. We can just hit these APIs and draw it up. So that makes me start thinking that um, we don't really need um, extensibility, but we do need more metrics. So if we just did exactly. Exactly. Then we just exactly. we get more error rates and you know I don't know them all off the top of my head but yeah I know there's, yeah. there's and at there's, this point at this point we should look at that link that Michael dropped in um, because yeah I was I was, you've looked at I was this trying already, to Michael. reconcile that in my in my head it's like the open telemetry project is open and, and you know supportive if we tell them you know X Y Z um, to to include that. And metrics, in, in contrast to, to traces, are not yet GA. They, they are still in flux. Uh, there is a, a good thread and that part of, of SIG observability, making sure that um, metrics and, and the, um, the default uh, serialization format of, of, of open telemetry uh, are, are harmonized. Um, so to me, the, the question is, like, Yale is a piece of software, right? Like, I. I I'm not getting it what, what beyond what, what is offered in 199, what would be part of, of your uh, proposal or your, your, your desire here? I, 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 well, I yeah, looking at this, I mean, if, if open telemetry is the endpoint, then I'm, I'm fine. I, I guess I'm just trying to figure out, hey, what's the layer that we can just grab the data from, you know, where it's a, Complete set of. Are you talking about the about. semantics, or are you talking about formats? I am. Um... The semantics at this point, again, like we're just trying to solve. I guess if I could just go back, like we're we're trying to solve not having to build a, a UI, to to right. go after these APIs ourselves to surface those metrics. If it's into the semantics. UI. So th then I would. Yeah, so I would definitely encourage you to to go to that one hundred ninety nine. Um, comment what you would like there, and I'm more than happy okay. to take an action item to work with Justin to to implement or to to introduce the, the desired semantics in Open Telemetry. Yeah, um, and, and again, this discussion is super early. We we just started having it, but I, I wanted to kind of just throw it out there to see what the community was thinking about, like you know, this like a pluggable abstraction layer to surface metrics into any system. Right. And, and that's, that's where there's this big fundamental difference between Prometheus exposition format and, and, and uh, open right. metric that do not have prescriptive semantics, right? There is no way, you know, define what a certain metric, there are conventions how to name metrics, but there is no semantics, right. Right? where open telemetry has a very opinionated way to go about that, right? And, and I think we should, if we, if, if we want that, leverage what, what especially given that open telemetry is very open and supportive there um if we say this is what we need um that we just use this this open issue to say yeah. like here, here's our wish list there's no guarantee that you know everything that we say there will be implemented one-to-one -one, and maybe someone would say well you know this specific metric is already covered with you know whatever is currently there these four or five categories that are already existing but at least this is something that is you know we, we wouldn't be making up a new standard, but we would be building on right. and extending an existing one. Exactly. Right. Yep. If, if that is, I, I'm still not sure because <laughs> Kiali, I, I know Kiali, I, I used to work at Reddit. I, I know where it comes from and, and what what it does, but that is where I, I the disconnects between what, you know, the-, the so, Yeah, I mean, and it makes sure, and, and, yeah, from. maybe I don't, well, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm making some assumptions here. I'm assuming that, and, and again, I'm going to spin this up here this week, but I'm assuming Kiali is hitting pure Istio APIs to draw um, the tracing. Is that a true statement? And if we don't know, we don't know, but that, that, that's the assumption that I'm under. 
it is definitely relatively I'm, at the current point in time what it currently does not that familiar with with how you know closely or tightly coupled it is with istio but i okay. i believe it is pretty well in yeah I'm, I'm assuming that's the case and then so we you know we were approaching this as okay a lot of people like kali uh that whole experience how can we just plug and play with kali on top of smi or or any any service mesh that is adhering to the smi specs right so if we can surface whether that's link or d uh you know well matthew what you're doing with Nginx, et cetera, like if, if you're surfing those metrics with, and, and again, I was thinking SMI metrics, then we can build that layer, then you'll be able to draw that up with, with, with whatever, you know, service meshes under or beneath that abstraction layer. So that, that to me sounds like, you know, like standardizing on a format, which um, gets back to, I think what Michael was saying is we can be working with open telemetry then. Right, okay. To define that. And, you know, I mean, from my perspective, uh, I mean, I, I kind of prefer that, you know, they're really taking the lead on, on you know, telemetry, you know, right. and then the format, the packets, the datagrams of what that telemetry is. And then it allows us to then just feed into that project, but then focus on, you know, L4, L7, networking, security, and then yep. the delivery of those metrics. But we don't, we don't care what those, met, we don't care about the format. We'll just use the format that people tell us is good for them, you know, which would be open yeah. to them, I guess. You know, I guess we'd have some opinion, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe if I make comment, uh, coming in from a newcomer's perspective, um, so a lot of, um, I used to work on uh, some of the collect, uh, telemetry agents, Collecti, Telegraph. Um, so some of the, most of our customers, if I see today, um, they, they're comfortable in leveraging Prometheus and they already are looking to deploy something like Prometheus, Grafana in, in, within their environments. So one of the questions would be, hey, why do I need one more um, uh, agent, like one more uh, software stack uh, like Kiali, for example? If I have Prometheus, can I have a way to integrate the uh, mesh metrics into a Prometheus? All right, so um, I guess it's a uh, um, uh, it's another uh, another entity that they have to look into configuring, installing, and managing. Right. So instead of um, uh, I mean, if you have something like Prometheus, a good, well integrated, uh, for example, open telemetry format, that's where uh, most of the folks are shifting to. It becomes easy to kind of leverage uh, uh, along with the rest of the uh, stack that they have, uh, rest of the Kubernetes um, applications that they have in, in something like Prometheus and Open Telemetry. Yeah, no, look, I, I totally agree with that. I think, you know, again, the level of environment you go into, right? So, hey, you go into environment and they're Prometheus 400, 500 level guys or people like, that works for them. But, you know, if we go to kind of like the core of what SMI is about, is to kind of like simplify the experience, right? Like, you know, Prometheus is going to give you a thousand knobs and a thousand buttons. I mean, you can just go to town. Uh, but for someone who's just like, just entering into this space and they just want pretty UI, you know, simple experience, not so worried about all the other bells and whistles. Um, even something like Prometheus could be pretty intimidating, yeah. you know, to kind of, you know, create all those queries, et cetera. Oh, definitely. I mean, um, I, I'm, yet, I'm yet to explore all the uh, functionalities of Kiali, but um, just a, a perspective of uh, what's being used, um, like yeah. open telemetry and Prometheus are the common ones that everybody's moving towards. Different. Right. And just to clarify, the the offer or the the idea here with with open telemetry is essentially, when we we say semantics, it's essentially this this kind of, um, you know, giving a name and defining exactly what its meaning is, right? So this metrics here, HTTP dot server dot duration. That's exactly you know measures the duration of the inbound HTTP request. That's it, right? So right. that when you yeah. see that, right, there is no doubt what it is, right? People don't have to come up with it. Where, where you know, Prometheus is 
or exposition format around that is is kind of like descriptive. It says, okay, this is the way how things should be named. Um, open telemetry in that sense is really prescriptive. It says, you know, this is this is the the the, the way how the metric looks like. And right. our task here would really be uh, on the one hand, and, and Phil, if you want to take lead on that, I'm happy to support you there to review okay. the existing open telemetry semantics that are already there that we can leverage say like you know here and this and this is already covered and here is a set that we you know that are not yet there that would be new um and then the way how how they want it if they span a new category or wherever they put it that, that's something else that's an implementation detail that the open telemetry folks need to sort out um but i'm also active in, in that community i can definitely as i said support process from the other side as well um but i, I think that's okay. in the sense of uh, having having something that is you know interoperable and 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 um, and you know leverages existing other uh, CNCF projects make probably most sense in this context. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right, we have a few minutes left, so I will open up the floor to any any other business. Is there anything that you? Um, would like to see, is there anything that um, you would want, like for example, upcoming um, KubeCon, CNCFCon uh, Europe? Um, anything? Honey, you any should bring that up. I have, should be doing I have 30 some tabs open of service mesh talks. I am reviewing for that. <laughs> and it looks like a lot I'm, of good stuff. I'm almost... I'm almost done with my observability done. So yeah, I know the <laughs> review deadline is coming up soon. So yep, I've been lazy over, over the last two weeks. So oh, holiday. It's me now. Yeah. Haven't we all? That's yeah. not good. <laughs> cool. Um, Very exciting. All right. And if there is anything, um, especially looking at, at people who recently joined us, so Sunku and, and I mean, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, help help yourself, right? So you don't need to wait until someone asks. Uh, there are plenty of issues there. You can start reviewing. You can um, work on whatever you like. Um, usually during the week we or during the two weeks where we we meet, uh, usually on on Slack. So it's it's not super uh, high verbose and 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 busy. So you know if you want to chime in there and and. Uh, ask something or suggest something Slack is, is definitely the way to be. You're not going to be overwhelmed there. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Tried starting, cool. started reading and uh, I'm lost in the bunch of information out there. Um, no, for sure. So my interest uh, to start off with um, uh, looking into KPIs for East-West traffic, not so traffic. And I saw awesome. some of the awesome. discussion in earlier notes. Um, so you're yeah, trying to understand more to figure out how best yeah. to establish that um, yeah. from a telco perspective. And, and don't be shy, right? I mean, you know, yeah. fresh eyes, it's always, uh, if you're longer around with something, you probably don't see that, you're blind to it. And fresh eyes always bring in a, a new, nice perspective on why, why are we doing things the way they are they're done. Absolutely, yeah, thank you. All right, cool. Thanks a lot and see you in uh, two weeks time again. Yeah. Cheers. Have a good one. Bye now. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.